Hey guys, welcome back to the show. This is Full Circle with Joyce with me, Joyce Omondi Waihiga. And uh, as we continue with our discussions on relationships today, the question is this, are you a giver in a world of takers? Um, but also, do you know how to draw the boundaries for yourself in, or your expectations to measure and level your expectations in whatever relationship that you're in? That's what we want to focus in right now. And my guest here is Cynthia Wamboyo Tieno, who again is a relationship coach. Karibu sana to the show. You're looking great. Thank you. Good Thank you for having you. me, Joyce. Karibu sana. It's amazing to be back. <laughs> now, um, a lot of people in marriages, friendships even, have this problem where they feel that their relationships are one-sided. What have you found? Um, it's, it's interesting because you find that um, a lot of people will say that, I've had this before, a lot of people will say that, I feel like I'm in this relationship alone. Mm. I feel like I'm giving and I'm not receiving anything back. And um, you'll hear quite a bit of that, especially in the beginnings of a relationship or in the first couple of years of marriage or when we start hitting uh, our, the drama stage in marriage. Mm. And so we can talk a little bit more about what are the different stages so that then you will be able to know the signs of when am I starting to sense that hey, I'm giving too much or, or taking more from the relationship mm. yes and we hear that argument particularly um from the woman's side mm -hmm. you know that you know women will say you know i'm the one constantly giving yeah of, it's not just money and resource it's of time of love yeah. attention um all of those things we've just been talking about that about how you know absentee fathers and how that has such a tremendous effect effect yeah. um even on their future children mm. um but you know and it's it's actually been the premise upon which we've even called for a lot of women leaders to step up yes. because we say you know when women are in leadership their priorities are different so mm. they're going to spend money on the things that matter and not you know other things i mean what's your take on that um particularly from the perspective of a lot of women who complain that they're the ones really looking out for their, their children and their families, not just financially, mm. but in kind and emotionally as well. Okay. That's, that's a very interesting perspective because um, you'll hear that a lot from women, but sometimes I will, I will question, is it because women are, will be better communicators mm. of what they're looking for in terms of expectation? So we tend to actually be more vocal in terms of what I need, how I need it, and where I need it. So right. is, is that the case where the man may not be even uh, stating that? But uh, as for the question itself, um, one, Im women are very are emotional beings. Mm. We give and we are going to give full circle. We are going to give emotionally, psychologically. We give, especially when we love. Mm -hmm. And we have loved and we will give to our children we will give to to anyone that is around us, especially when there's a commitment. So yes, women are givers. Um, when you think about it, women tend to incubate a lot of information and when they have the opportunity to give, they will give, okay? And so what one needs to understand is that um, as I give, am I also creating the correct boundaries mm. that help me become a, um, a, a, a person that is fully equipped? Am I giving what I don't already have? Or am I emptying myself and I'm not able to receive and stay full? Let's talk about that a little more because, um, you know, relationships, one of the things I often say is mm. that, especially marriage, I think in a way it teaches you how selfish you are as an individual. <laughs> so in yes. a sense, this question of am I giving too much almost feels weird yes. because it feels like that's what you're supposed to be doing anyways. Yes. But is that true? Is there a level at which it just becomes, you know, unhealthy or, you know, inappropriate even yeah. that, that you're at a point where you're actually overdoing it? Because really the essence of relationships is not about you. Me, it it's about, about the, the other person. person. That's that's I have been asking myself that question because I'm it's, struggling with it. Too. Yes, yeah. because we're coming from also a Christian perspective yeah. where for God so loved the world that, that he, he gave. gave and he gave over and above and he gave above and beyond who he, he I mean, he is God himself. He gave his son and his son did, did not give this love conditionally that if you do this, mm. then I will die. 
he gave. So we have a template or we have um, a, an example of what giving looks like, which is selfless, mm -hmm. which is um, unconditional. That's our template. Yeah. However, we have to understand that there's some giving that can be dangerous to you as a person. And so one thing that I always will tell a couple or a, a woman is first understand you. Mm. Know me. If I understand me, what, what do I want? You know, before I give, I had better know what I have in terms of capacity. Mm. If you know you're going to pour from a certain flask into a cup, you had better know the flask's capacity and the cup's capacity. Or if not, you're going to actually pour and, 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 and then damage. You get and you get frustrated. Both of you are going to get frustrated. So know me. Yeah. What do I like? What do I have to offer? Do I really have to offer this right now? Now, in a marriage con context, you've got to realize that these are two people giving. It's not one person giving. Mm. Okay? This, if it's a healthy relationship, two it's ways. two people giving. And, and, and I, I hear this quite a bit in the world that I'm giving 50 and you're giving 50. That's measured. Okay? But in a marriage context, a biblical covenant marriage, you're giving 100% and this other person is giving 100. Mm. So if it's a healthy relationship, you're giving and the other person is not just a taker, they're a giver too. Mm. Now, where is the danger? The danger, Joyce, is where you are giving and there's a sense of loss. Mm. A sense of, I have been giving for the last six years and I have not felt a sense of um, fulfillment. I'm not feeling a sense of acknowledgement, a sense of affirmation mm. okay, in this relationship. This trouble there, when you feel emotionally drained, emotionally taken, it doesn't matter how much you have prayed, but you still f remember we, we were created as relational beings. Mm. And so if I'm consistently giving and there's nothing that it's, it's like a tennis ball, you know, if we were to play tennis, I'm going to hit the ball. And at some point in time, that ball had better be hit back. Mm. If not, I'm playing a one-sided game. Mm. So that's a sign. The other sign is that there's a sense, okay, there's a sense you feel that if I don't give, this person will leave me. Mm. That's okay? manipulative. Though. That's manipulation. So then there's control around my giving. So I have fear. If my giving does not have a sense of freedom, but it has fear, it has a sense of emotionally being tagged, there's a problem there. Mm. Then there's, there's that other sense, uh, Joyce, that we get of, hmm, if I don't give, then I am nothing. A sense of right. worthlessness. So, so the I problem get, is actually on that person then. Exactly. It's me who, who always gives, but there's a selfish um, it's false measure, humility. False humility. It can also be that I have a sense of insecurity. Right. So when I give you, I'm giving to you because I feel a certain, you know, thing. I feel, hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm better than you now because mm. I'm, now the ball is on your court. Then there's, there's a problem there. The mm. giving itself is one that has um, some sense of manipulation, some sense of selfishness that is there. You've got to watch that. Then there's also one that I depend, you know, where, where the, the core dependency, mm. where I feel like, and this happens a lot with mothers and their children, you're giving and tying this child to, to where they are just going to be dependent on you. Mm. Okay. There's such a sense of if this pa if I don't give this person, this person will not survive. Mm. We see that a lot with parents and their children, mm. okay, or children with their parents. You've got to, at some point in time, when you give birth to this child, before they were dependent on you, but then the doctor does a very good job. <laughs> they cut the umbilical cord. What they are saying is now this child should be able to depend on, of course, God. But also, they have everything that they need to survive. But if I'm now going to keep holding on to this baby, 
and holding on to them in a very unhealthy fashion, then my giving is not going to make them a full human being that will thrive on their own. I am making them dependent to me. Hmm. Mm. Wow, this is very profound. And it, it, it reminds me a lot about scripture because that to me is the whole salvation story. In the same way we cannot do good to please God and get into heaven, we are saved by grace yes. and not by works. Yes. If you're finding yourself in a situation where you're giving, you know, if you're, that's why even the Bible says give cheerfully. The Lord yes. loves a cheerful giver. Because exactly. there's a way you can say you're giving, but in your heart you know you're doing it to get something or you're manipulating someone. That isn't actually healthy. And so the problem might actually be, as Cynthia is saying, on your end with your insecurities yeah. and you trying to manipulate people. But Cynthia, let's talk then about how to actually say no. Mm. Perhaps I've identified, okay, you know what? Maybe I've been given 100%. This person in the relationship is not giving. They're not pulling their weight. Mm. It could be a husband, a spouse. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, a sister, in-laws, yes. right? <laughs> How do you learn or at what point do you know, okay, I need to pull the plug on this mm. and I need, to, I need to speak up and say no? Exactly, Joyce. It's not easy to say no, especially if you've built a culture or around that giving. It's almost like you have a ka-altar of my giving, I feel a certain way. Remember, you have to break that habit. So it's going to take you acknowledging that I have a problem. You see, all this time you didn't know this is a problem. It's an issue that has affected your relationship. You've actually not been in a healthy relationship with your spouse or with your in-laws or with your children. Mm. Acknowledge I have a problem is number one. Number two, I would say, is create the boundaries. Decide and make a commitment that these are the boundaries that are safe for me and to be a better parent, to be a better spouse, and invite your spouse to that conversation. Mm. I totally believe that this is such an amazing conversation for a husband and wife to sit down and say, babe, I, 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 I totally feel that I have not been true to you in, in the sense that I have been giving to you. I have made you not become a better spouse towards me. And I want us to survive. I want us to not just survive, actually, I want us to thrive. So what are the things that you can help me by holding me accountable in being a better spouse to you? Mm. And you see, you create the boundaries even together. So you can create the boundaries on your own, okay? Especially when you're trying to do a mother-daughter, you know, boundary. Or even as a couple, you can actually sit down and say, are we in a safe space? Right. Okay? That, those are some of the things that you can do. The other thing that is so critical, Joyce, is being able to pray and acknowledging it before God. He created you. Mm -hmm. I, I totally believe that the, the relationship that we have with the Father is going to help the relationship that we're going to have with others. So acknowledging it before God and saying, God, I am totally failing in this relationship. As a kid, every, every boyfriend that I've always had has taken, taken, taken. Uh, when I went to work, they take, take, take. Okay, God, please help me. Right. Teach me. Right. Show me the way that I need to walk. Okay. Cynthia, there's a question here that I want us to answer in light of this conversation that we're having. Okay. Um, someone here says, Hi, Joyce. I have been in a relationship for five years. I have introduced my boyfriend to my parents when I was graduating, but he has never introduced me to any member of his family. Lately, Ooh. I found him with another lady in his house making love. I am now confused. What will I tell my parents when I break up with him because I have already introduced him? This is a case of infidelity, but if you think about it in light of what we're saying, it is a situation of one person has given a lot into this relationship, the other person has taken what they've wanted, and then they've you know, taken gone off, off yeah. with someone else. Yeah. What would you advise um, this person here in light of what we're talking about as far as giving too much? She seems to be considering breaking up with him. Mm. but she's nervous about about what, what the like. consequences yeah. are. Uh, um, this is what I would tell you is you one better a broken engagement than a broken marriage yeah. and what you have seen believe it believe it that that thing can become consistent. So one of the things that I would ask you uh, the, the young lady on, on online is it's important you are true to yourself. You're true to the fact that, yes, I did the right thing. 
you, you know, there was nothing wrong with you introducing somebody that you love mm -hmm. to your family. It's okay that you did. You did the right thing. But then again, when we, when we, uh, when other people have betrayed us and, and things have happened, it's okay to acknowledge that this betrayal has happened, but I deserve more and I deserve better. Mm. And going back even to the family and saying that, you know what, this is not going to happen. That's the trueness to yourself that I need to acknowledge that this is not where I want to go. Mm -hmm. And so that should not be a place of fear. I, I celebrate the victory that would come out of that is knowing that you saved yourself from a situation that would have become in 10 years even more problematic. Right. Yeah. So, okay. so I'm sorry that you're for the loss that is happening in terms of, you know, seeing as your, your, your friend, the person that you really have loved, mm. you've given to him, but giving him does not stop you from actually doing what is right for you. Right. You deserve better and you deserve yes. far, far more than that. Yeah. Cynthia, thank you so much for being here today. It's thank been you. such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that has sent in their SMSs and their feedback. Uh, we really do appreciate it. If you've missed anything that Cynthia has said uh, or our earlier guest, George, be sure to catch the repeat of this show that runs at 3 p.m. right here on Switch TV. And you can also watch the episode online. But now, just before I come back to close the show, here is is Travis Green with the song Intentional and just the way God is intentional about us I hope that you will be intentional about your relationships as well stay tuned I'll be back right after this